my beautiful glam sisters welcome to today's video we are testing out the brand new makeup forever HD skin powdered foundation we're gonna see how it holds up compared to my holy grail previous version called the matte velvet powder and you guys know if you're a glam fam sister this is just like my just my ultimate powdered foundation and I have been wearing foundation powdered foundation for over 30 years I mean longer than most of these influencers have been alive so I am just an expert, I will say, when it comes to powdered foundation. And this is all I have on today. I don't have any liquid foundation. I'm gonna show you how to apply it the best way and for my skin type, and then I'll give you alternatives if you have different skin types. So we'll go through all of that, plus the ingredients, why they're so different, and all that fun stuff. So if you're new here, I'm Christy. I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and click that post notification bell. Join us, we're here every Friday and Sunday, and we just love for you to become part of our family. If you like videos like this, please give it a huge thumbs up when you guys hit the like button and comment below. It really does help my videos out. You can follow me on all of my socials at Christy Allure and check out my merch, Glamorous Life Collections. And without further ado, let's get started. You're still my favorite queen of the night. A friend, let's drive off again. Let's drive off again. So I am extremely excited about this video. It is early in the morning, so if I don't seem extremely excited, it's just because I'm tired. <laughs> it's almost 8 a.m. and I am starting this early so we can do a long wear test. And I do have some outdoor footage because I have actually been wearing this a lot off camera. So I will show you guys that towards the end. As always, timestamps will be on the time bar below as well as in the description box. So you guys know, I am a huge, huge fan. If you are a Glam Fam sister, you guys know this is my holy grail powdered foundation this is the makeup forever this one was called just their matte velvet foundation powder this is the brand new makeup forever HD skin matte velvet undetectable long wear blurring powder foundation so the biggest difference is the fact that this one does not have talc in it so the old version had talc in it we'll go over why that's good and bad in just a second as always we are going to dive into these ingredients and really see what the difference is between the two and I was very fortunate because I got to speak to one of the makeup forever pro artist Rachel she's actually a film and makeup artist and she I just picked her brain I luckily ran into her at my Sephora where I picked up this powdered foundation and I got to really talk to her and she actually agreed to come on our my channel and maybe answer any questions you guys have on makeup forever products comment below and let me know if you guys want to see that I know Rachel's going to see this video so thank you so much Rachel we got to do some little in in store filming of what the product looked like on display and she was just extremely sweet knowledgeable and amazing so I am just dying to have her on the channel and we can do like a live maybe what do you guys think about that let me know in the description box because I'd love for Rachel to come on here and she has a wealth of knowledge and experience in the makeup industry as well as with makeup forever products so this does run $43 the old version was $40 so they went up a few dollars in price the sizing looks about the same so this brand new one is 0.38 ounce ounces and 11 grams of product so we're looking at about three dollars and 90 cents per gram and both of these are made in France so you're getting the same type of quality which I like and I'll show you guys what the back looks like on both of them just so you guys can see so that is my perfect shade Y225 I just think that Y225 matches me a little bit better but one Y08 was the closest match and my perfect match in the new version if you're a twinsy to me which I know quite a few of you are and that is the swatch on my finger because I think it's best on my finger to really show you guys the true tones of it and that's again in natural daylight not in my studio where it's really hard to see now let's jump into my studio and show you guys what that color tone looks like this is the brand new one that shade is Y108 and is a warm porcelain for fair to light skin tones with yellow undertones anything darker we notice just 
oxidized and did not look good on my skin. This was the perfect match. I did pick up one and one zero. I already returned that because it wasn't the right shade. And that one is called Ivory and that's fair to light skin tones with neutral undertones. Now, Rachel said that's her perfect shade. She had it on in store and it was absolutely beautiful on her. So if you're close to Rachel, I'll pop up her picture. That is her perfect shade. So one Y08 was my perfect shade. Now don't look at the numbers and go, wow, well, how come you're lighter than her? I think it really depends on the undertone because the undertone can change that even though it's lower on the spectrum of shades, doesn't mean necessarily that it's lighter. I think the old version had more peach, almost leaning neutral coal. So this is the old version and that's the new version. I can do either one, but I did personally like the 225. So that's one thing I wish they would have done is I wish they would have just kept the same shades. That's my, I'm just gonna be honest as always and transparent with you guys. Let's kind of touch on the old description just to kind of see the difference of what that says versus the new one. It states that it's a full coverage blurring powder with a lifelike matte finish. It bends and breathes with the skin for 12 hour wear and never cakes. So that's gonna be the biggest difference right there because as we will mention in just a second, the new one says it's a 24 hour wear. So a little bit longer wear. It was available in 30 shades this new one is available in 32 shades so plus on that so let's jump into the details of this new makeup forever HD skin powdered foundation now one thing this is the biggest thing is that it doesn't have talc in it which is a huge plus for those of you out there that don't like talc in your products I don't mind it it doesn't bother my skin so I'm fine with it and I know there's other dangers of talc so I get it I absolutely get it so if anything doesn't have talc in it, that's great. The only downside to that is because it didn't put anything else with an oil absorbing type ingredient like Upsolite in there. And I know that's a newer technology and that is, you know, pretty exclusive to only certain brands right now with like Janessa Myricks and Linda Halberg, All Natural. They're the only ones that really have Upsolite in their products. Now, something like that would have been nice in here because I think it would have been better for oily skin. I watched one review only and only because I like her a lot and because she has oily skin. So I wanted to see the opposition because I have dry to normal skin. I'll link her video, Miriam. I like her in NYC. She's really one of the very few YouTuber beauty content creators I will watch. And her wear test did not go so well with the new version and she has really oily skin. So and I, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's because there's no talc in here. So there's no talc in this one. She said this one was fine with her. She loved this one. And it, because it had talc, it soaked up the oil. We all know that Upslite so soaks up to like 75% of oil. Talc soaks up to, I think like 50%, if I remember right. I showed that chart in the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Foundation. I'll show it to you again right there. But you, you can go into my description of why Upslite is such a fantastic ingredient. That would have been something incredible to put in here. But let's just touch on the other benefits of this new HD Skin Powdered Foundation. So this is the HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder now. So they put in the HD. It's an undetectable long wear blurring powdered foundation that delivers natural looking matte coverage, is not supposed to cake or crease, and it does have a 24 hour wear. It is humidity resistant, and it does have a combination of three different powders we'll get into in just a second. One swipe with the sponge that comes in the compact is supposed to give you medium to full coverage in one swipe covering up your pores and imperfections. It is a washable dual sided applicator. So one side is going to give you that coverage. The other side is going to give you more of a softer, more of like for retouching and stuff like that. It's a sociable, reasonable formula that does not contain any harmful ingredients. It provides customizable coverage and is even more versatile than ever. So you can use it as a buildable foundation, a setting powder, or for touch-ups. This waterproof and sweat-proof formula also locks in hydration for maximum comfort. I think this one is a little lighter than the other one. So this one you can definitely use more as a setting powder where the old one could 
look a little much for that. So that's one thing that's really great about this new version. It's also vegan, gluten-free, cruelty-free, and comes in recyclable packaging. And this new version has a trio blur complex, which visibly reduces the appearance of texture immediately and for up to 24 hours. The first ingredient is synthetic fluorfluogite. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but it's widely referred to as synthetic mica. The second ingredient is boron nitride, which is a relatively new ingredient in the world of cosmetics when I did my research. It's a white powdery inorganic substance that has a similar appearance to talc. However, unlike talc, boron nitrate is non-toxic and non-irritating. The third ingredient is pentaryl, I can't even say that word, you guys can see it right there, the whole word. It's a synthetic lipid-based ingredient used in a skin conditioning agent and is a high molecular weight of emollient esters that make your skin nice and smooth. So that is one of the things that is supposed to be the smoothing aspect. The fifth ingredient is polymethyl methyl cryolate. It's a spherical shaped particles scattered light to provide a blurring effect for products. The other ingredient I noticed was tocopherol. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but it's a pure form of vitamin E and it's in a lot of products and it has strong antioxidant properties. Now, as far as prepping your skin, I can tell you this right now, everyone that's been giving a review on this and I have seen just thumbnails or just briefly, I'll scroll through it on Instagram. I, have, I don't watch them, but I'll just scroll, scroll, scroll through it, if I can say it, are like in their 30s, okay? Nobody's over 40. If you're over 40, you are a powdered foundation girl. You guys know, that's all we had back in the days. We didn't have, we had MAC Fix Plus, okay? Laura Mercier started coming out. We had Clinique, we had Estee Lauder, Chanel, Lancome. That's all we had back in the days. And that's, girls, we didn't have these liquid foundations that were amazing, okay? And I'm talking back in the 80s and early 90s, okay? I wore powder foundation a lot because I performed. I was a dancer. I was a pageant girl. I was a professional dancer in the NBA. I performed in front of 17,000 people in an NBA basketball game. We needed coverage. We didn't have liquid foundation back in those days. So I am the queen of powder foundation. And I know there are a lot of you out there that feel the same way. Amber, she only uses powder foundation. So I got her hooked on this a while back. And then I think she does one size as well. And then now she likes the Danessa Myricks. So we are powdered foundation. We are the queen of powder foundation. So how I prepped my skin this morning is with my dermatology vitamin C, E, F. And then I go in a little bit with my needleless serum during the winter. During the summer, I can just do the C, E, F in the morning and then use my code Christy20 and that gives you 20% off unlimited. Everyone that I have gotten started on dermatology loves dermatology. And now they have the number one primer, which we're going to use in this video because together these are just mucho perfection. And then I did go in with this and I've been really liking this. Now to be transparent, Ruffer sent this over to me and this is the Rebalancing Essence. It's like a serum. It is a really beautiful, I'll go into more detail uh, in another video, but I've been using this and really liking it in the morning and the night. And I just added it into my dermatology and I just get that little extra moisturizing. And then I also used their lightweight cream. Their other cream is heavier, but it has coconut oil in it. So this one worked for my skin type. And I put that on this morning. So I didn't, I haven't, it's been already kind of, my skin has already sucked all of that up. So I am gonna go in with my Kills Ultra Facial Cream. You guys know I love this stuff. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that on my skin, just to make sure. And I'll show you what my skin looks like before, so we can get, a, I'm gonna try to remember to do that from now on. That's what it looks like before. And now we're gonna, and I like to put this down the neck because I put powdered foundation down my neck just like I would liquid. You're gonna put powder on just like you do liquid. There's no like special formula. It's just the application and the prepping that is probably big. But again, that's so different for everybody. Now, if you have oily skin, I wouldn't use all these moisturizers. I wouldn't even do all of this extra skin prep. This is just for dry skin. If you have oily skin, you're gonna wanna use moisturizers that are good for oily skin. And then I would go in with some type of oil absorber primer. So that's the next thing I would go in with and I'm just gonna put a small amount of that on there and that's what the consistency looks like and then we're just gonna press this into the skin 
and I just kind of put it on the T-zone areas where I have pores. You don't really need this all over because you don't want to waste it. That's the biggest thing. I'm going to go in with my uh, Real Techniques, and this is just a skincare brush. I've been liking to apply my primers lately with this. Anywhere you, where you have texture is where you want to do this. Now, the biggest thing with powdered foundation is you're going to want to do your concealers and any type of liquid products you use underneath. So. Two concealers I preferably like to use, and again, this is just my my skin type, okay, is my Huda Beauty Luminous Matte, and then the Born This Way, I've been going back to this a lot, and I actually love these two in combination because neither one of these are my perfect shade, so I like to use them together. That's a little extra, you don't have to do that. Another one would be the Sephora bright future if you have very, very dry skin. So one thing I am going to do is if you have any type of areas like right now, um, you know, I still have discolorization. I have a little breakout right there from hormones because it's that time of the month. <laughs> so lovely time of the month, but uh, I haven't really broke out in a long time. I don't know why. I think I just haven't been eating that good either. But anyway, I'm going to go in with my bright future shade 10.5. And I'm just gonna go in the areas where I just want a little bit more coverage. Uh, I think we're good there. I'm gonna do a little, I have a little redness right there. Cause this one doesn't cover as good as the other one does. The best thing to do is just press. You want it to press into your skin. I don't like a lot of swiping motions unless it's a really fluid foundation where concealer is not fluid. So it's a little bit more, has a little bit more base to it, right? Than a foundation. All right, now let's do my concealer. I'm gonna take the Huda Luminous in 2.5 Nougat. I need to get a new one. I've already repurchased this three times. I'm gonna take my uh, Too Faced Born This Way in Snow, and I'm just gonna go right there, and that's just where I liked a little bit more brightening. All right, let's go in. We are gonna try it with their sponge just because that's their recommendation. Again, this is what it looks like. And this is the side you'd wanna use for more coverage. I have not tried it with this sponge yet. So I'm gonna just take it, I'm gonna swipe that like that. That's what it looks like on the sponge. And they say, she said to go this way. And that's how you do it. So this is why I don't like that because I did liquid. Okay, so this, I'm gonna show you why I don't like using the sponge. Now, because I like more pressing motions, this is not, for me, the best applicator. This is something like, if I'm in, um, in a touch-up mode or something like that, it's nice to have in here, but personally, I don't like to dirty them, so that was not fun. This is how I like to apply it, and this is a Makeup Forever product, too. And first of all, I forgot to set my concealer, which is wonderful. So what I'm gonna do, because that is not a color I would use for setting my concealer, I'm gonna go into my Y225, and I'm going to use my Makeup Forever Teardrop Sponge. If anyone from Makeup Forever ever watches this, this is Y225. This is my favorite sponge to use, and they have it for $10 on their website, but it's been out of stock for like four months now. So please put it back in stock. I don't know what I'm gonna do without this. So I'm gonna set my under eyes with this color because this is a color I can use under my eye. And I think that's what we're gonna do to show you guys the comparison. So this is, and I'll kind of put it right there too, just so you guys can see the difference. This is just magical. This powder is just magical. There is, I'm sorry, but this old version is just still magical. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys, that's all I can say. Now, although this is good, this is good, and still better than all the other competitors, I still think the first one is magical. So this is the Makeup Forever 100 millimeter pop, and this is $12 on their site. This is my favorite way to apply powdered foundation. Number one, the best, best of the best. Best puff on the market. There are a ton of affordable alternatives, yes, but there is nothing better, in my opinion, than this guy with all of my powders. Other applicators you can use, because I do want to go over this really quick. For the most coverage, use a puff by far. Yes, you can use that sponge, but because unless you're doing no concealer and no spot concealing, then I don't always recommend doing it this way because you swipe, okay? And that's gonna disrupt your liquid foundations. And you guys know I'm all about pressing in and pressing in your powders are so much better than swiping your powders. 
telling you guys, huge difference. Okay, now another applicator you can use for for coverage, but in a brush format, if you're like, I don't really like sponges, is any type of flat kabuki brush. This is a Dallium Tools. I love their uh, brushes. Makeup artists all over the world use Dallium Tools. And this is the 956 slanted version. Now they come in different type of, this is the pro version, but they also have the yellow and then they have the blue one, the triangle versions. To me, the pro, anyone could get it, is the best out of the Dallium tools. And you can press the powders in, any kind of flat, and that's gonna give you coverage. I'll just show you guys. So you'll just grab that, let's just do the forehead, and you can press that in. The thing about brushes, though, are though it's beautiful to press in, I don't recommend it as much. But if you're like, I don't like puffs, Christy, and some people don't, then this is your next best thing besides the sponge that it comes with, okay? Because it's flat, it's gonna give you the pigments, but it's not necessarily pressing it into the skin. That's why I don't really appreciate those as much. Another one is the Dallium Tools 957 Precision Kabuki, and this is a wider version. So this is nice too, because you can get a lot of coverage and space with it. But the reason why, again, I don't like this is it's not pressing it into the skin. It's just gonna give you a better wear time with a puff, in my opinion. Another one would be the Sigma F80 Flat. Uh, foundation. This is a foundation brush too, but this is another one. This is like the Bedallium Tools ones. I even like this one a little bit more. It has a little bit softer fibers, synthetic fibers. So this is a good one too to place pigment in. Now, if you're like, I don't want that much coverage, then something like the BK Beauty 105. This is a good one. This is a good synthetic version because you can do more pressing. You could do swiping, but this is, because it has so much density, it, it's better for pressing. So this would be my other recommendation besides the Dallium and the Sigma one. But my number one recommendation for powdered foundation, whether you want a light coverage or not, or full coverage, is going to be a puff. I'm gonna show you what why the difference between using the sponge that it comes with and this. So let's take this same type of motion that we're gonna do. And again, this is one Y zero eight. You can do swipe swiping motions like this, okay? But you're gonna see right here, I'm gonna pull you guys in really close, how that looks versus pressing it in. Where, what pores? Now, I feel like when I swiped it, my pores were like, boom, you can see them clearly. But when I press, there's no pores. So pressing is key with powdered foundation. I mean, seriously, you guys, what, what, what pores? This is why this is amazing. Amazing. Okay, I'm gonna use this side with the 225 just to show you guys the difference. I'm gonna go on the other side of the puff. I'm gonna take that, that's what 225 marble looks like. Again, this is a light golden. It, it looks about the same. It does. I don't know, today I kind of like this side for some reason. That's interesting. Okay, well that's good, because that's the new version. So that's the old Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Powder. And then we have the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Powdered Foundation. That's the difference in the two. I like them both, they're pretty much almost the same. And it really is this applicator, you guys. So I have the Laura Mercier one, and it's just not the same. It does not, there's something extra special about the fibers in this, or whatever they're called. This puff is just magical, I cannot tell you guys. This is the only way I like to apply powdered foundation now. The only way. Yes, you can get really cheap ones on Amazon, on Sheen, but they just don't work like this. Another one I did like was the Velour Puff from uh, Beauty Blender. It used to be my old way of doing it. And this one gives you a lot of coverage too, and it is good. But there's something about this one that's just a little bit softer and just, I don't know what it is, you guys. I really can't explain. Yeah, that's like my perfect match. Rachel and I sat there, the Makeup Forever pro artist and I sat there and we tried them all on me and this was the best match. So actually, I think I dig this one even a little bit more than my 225. This is my go-to makeup routine off camera. I don't really wear liquid foundation off camera. And then I'm just gonna take my Chikohono brush now and any excess powder we're getting off. 
and any type of really, you want it to be a super soft, fluffy brush. All right, now I'm gonna go in with the new Danessa Myricks Yummy Flushed Balm, and this is in Jubilee. As I promised a lot of you, I was going to test out more shades. I have Bellini on the way. Uh, still, Rose and Brunches is my favorite out of the out of these two. I like this Jubilee one, but I don't love it as much. The color tone, the formulation is incredible. It's the color tone I don't love as much. This one is highly pigmented, so be super careful with this one. So I'm gonna swipe that. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. And I'm just gonna dip that. See how that's so pigmented? I'm gonna take it off the back of my hand. I find that this color for me, the best way to apply it is that way. How pretty is that? Now I tried it when I went directly from here to there and it was like whoa that was way too much way too much so i had to with these type of shades really take it off the back of my hand and work slowly then i liked the color but i didn't like this color as much on my lips i liked the a rose and brunch is better i hope she comes out with more shades because this is literally the best cream formulation ever made i think it's a really pretty color i still like rose and brunch is better but let me know in the comment section what you guys think if you watched my previous video and you haven't go back and check that out and let me know what you think of the two colors this is definitely more of a coral orangey tone uh behind it versus the other one was just more pinky mauve i would say so i like that one better on my lips and stuff like that it's still my favorite but this is beautiful so in the makeup forever age HD Skin, which you guys know is still one of my top liquid foundations. I wear one and one four, but when I tried one in and one four in store, it did not match. Even my self tan, it did not match. It was way too dark. So for me personally, and this is just from my personal experience, I always have to go a little bit lighter with powders than I do with the matching foundation shade. That's not too many brands do that, but for me, my experience, this is a little bit darker for me. I need to go a little bit darker in the liquid foundation. So 1Y08 is the perfect match for me. All right, we're gonna come back at the end of the night, give my final ratings. I will be checking in with you guys with an outdoor check-in in the midday, but I already know how this wears, you guys. It wears beautifully, it does. I wore it again for 16 hours, but I want you guys to kind of get a gauge. We're not gonna get a 16 hour wear test today. So this is today, it's gonna be more of an eight hour wear test, but you'll still get to see how it's going to look at the end of the night. Again, I will show you outside of my studio and all of that. So I will see you guys at the midday check-in. All right, my beautiful glam fam. So we are outdoors now, and this is four hours into wearing this powder foundation. Again, I already know how this wears, but I really want you guys to see, especially outdoors, to see the true color tones. And that looks really good. I mean, that's literally a perfect match. And I have Jubilee, by the way, on my lips now. I was testing it out for a YouTube short and I like it. It looks pretty. It's not my favorite. I still like the Rose and Brunches, just on a side note, but as far as this new Makeup Forever HD skin, it holds up really beautiful on normal to dry skin. I'm a little concerned with my oily skin girls, but I'm not sure, so let me know in the comment section if you guys do have oily skin, if you've tried this out, how it's wearing on you, but other than that, it looks pretty good, so I will see you guys at the end of the night. I'll show you guys what it looked like after I applied everything, just so you can see how the final look came out early in the day and it came out really beautiful and now we're back in my studio and it is about ooh, it's almost six o'clock so we're looking at about nine hour wear test that's pretty darn good and this is how it's looking I mean I don't I didn't have any more I took off that lip stuff I put the Jubilee on just to test it out now I just put some lip oil on it's just my Jaclyn Hill lip oil but everything is still looking exactly the same on me. So for me, I already know kind of how powdered foundation works on my skin. Now you do see the normal cracking like right here. Um, I'm gonna pull you guys in really close in studio. So you'll see kind of the normal cracking and then I'll show you some B-roll footage outside of my studio lights, just so you can kind of see, but you know, always the studio lights make it look a little bit better. I had a little pimple right there and that's popping through now. So the powder starts to wear off there. I didn't do too much covering of that because I really wanted you guys to see how it would cover a blemish. So at first it was really covering it up and now it's kind of, faded away you can see the red popping through so it's that time of the month for me so that's okay i mean that's real life this is where we're at but other than that everywhere else it's wearing really beautifully and my skin just looks 
uh, how do I say it looks breathable in powdered foundations in my opinion like I just feel like it never looks cakey especially this formula other powdered foundations I can't say the same thing even Mac fix plus was good back in the day but it wasn't great in my opinion just my opinion but it was really great for what we had back in those days and for us NBA dancers professional you know NBA NFL dancers we had to use Mac fix plus because that was really the only thing on the market but now with makeup forever hd skin and even the matte velvet they just give us more uh wear time on powdered foundations all powdered foundations look great in the beginning but the wear time is where it differs so i have done previous powdered foundations on my channel i did the fenty beauty one it was good but it wasn't great I still love for under my eye. I still love my one size. I don't know if I can derail from this because it's the perfect color tone. This 2R is just the perfect color tone and the perfect amount of coverage underneath my eye where it doesn't look cakey or creasy. So I do want to try the alabaster in the new formulation and really see if I like it. So I will keep you guys updated. I will try it on in another video. So stay tuned for that. But as far as I had mixed emotions going into this because when I tried it out previously, I don't know if it was because I couldn't let go of this and I just was not allowing myself to like something else. But for some reason, I think I like this one better today. I don't know why. And I am going to give this a solid five out of five, you guys. It really is a phenomenal powdered foundation. 100% of me would recommend this for normal to dry skin. I'm recommending it. I don't know about oily skin. That's why I'm, I want to preface that. But it really did hit all the marks. And I'm going to give this a gold star because I feel like they didn't change this too much. If you're new to my channel, the gold star means I will repurchase this product over and over again, and it's going to be a top shelf product. That is the only products that will get a gold star review. And as far as all of the application goes, how smoothing, the ingredients, all of that is pretty much check marks across the board. And I would say 100% of me would say it met every single one of those expectations that I look for when I look for makeup products, when I look for something that I would recommend to you guys. And I hope that helps you guys out because a lot of the times I can sit here and say, well, yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. Go out and buy it. But I'm not telling you why. And that, I think that's really important, especially like I said earlier in the video, this day and age, we don't have a lot of money to just throw around a lot of us, a lot of us. Maybe there are very wealthy people that are not really concerned about the inflation and the economy right now, but there are a majority of us suffering. It's really sad when you go to Costco and you're still like, oh my gosh, how am I going to afford all these groceries? And I feel that way. You know, I'm not making tons of money on YouTube like a lot of these other influencers are. I don't get thousands of views on my videos. So I'd love if you share this video and like this video and subscribe to this video because that really does help me. But what I'm trying to say is when I am looking for a product and recommending it to you guys, I want to make sure all of those check marks are there for me to give you my honest opinion. As always, it's all relative, especially with makeup, because we all have different skin types and preferences. So what I may like, you may dislike, vice versa. So always keep that in mind. I am giving you my scores and my ratings and my opinions based on my skin type and preferences. So please keep that in mind. Again, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Are you a powdered foundation girl? Are you a girl of the 80s and early 90s where that's all we had? Let me know. I love to hear that. And let me know what shades you guys picked up, your skin type, how it's wearing for you guys, or if you, if you like. A lot of people don't like powdered foundation. So for me, it's my favorite. I know Amber loves it, and I know there are a few of you out there that love it. And it really does help increase the longevity even of your liquid foundation. So what I like is they made it a little bit lightweight so that if you decide to use it, I used these together the other day. You guys know this is like my top foundation right now, this KVD Good Apple Serum. So together, these were gorgeous. 
absolutely gorgeous. It extended this even longer. So I like that and it's lightweight where it doesn't look cakey on top of this. So that's really great. So just for reference, I'm medium 30 in the new KBD foundation. I am light neutral in the iconic London. And then I will list below in the description. It's always on my website, christialore.com. Just so you guys know, that's my blog. So I have all of my foundation shades, concealer shades, all of that is on my blog, all of my affiliate links, everything is on Christialore com just so you guys know that but I hope you guys enjoyed this thank you so much for watching if you made it this far in the video thank you so much as always when you guys watch to the end it really does help my videos out and it helps push my videos up through the algorithm if you're new here if you haven't subscribed please remember to hit that subscribe button and click the post notification bell join us we're here every Friday and Sunday and again we just want you to become part of our beautiful glam fam if you like videos like this please remember to give it a huge thumbs up if you haven't already and hit that like button when you guys comment below Below and like the video it really does help my videos out and we utilize my affiliate links thank you so much I will have everything I have on my face in the description box as always when you click that link it really does help go to support my channel so thank you for all your love and support glam fam and you can follow me on all of my socials at Christy Allure on Instagram TikTok Facebook all of that Twitter and you can check out my merch glamorouslifecollections.com I'm gonna be revamping my merch website so stay tuned for that I love you guys and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys. Never up, never down, never. Like a theme in a song, clever. Feeling high, feeling low at the same time. Feel so right, then I'm wrong, hoping I'll be fine. But I get up, I always do.